Okay. A little bit of a, well, first uh, correction is something I was I wanted to do last night, and as it was, it was late as it was, I just totally and tired as it was, I totally brain farted and forgot what it was I promised in the video. The Starfleet Marine Corps emblem that I worked up. Here it is, right there. As you can see, you're on top of things. Instead of the regular eagle, I got a phoenix rising from the flame. So they got Starfleet's little symbol there, and now the Starfleet symbol in the middle there. And you, know, I figured this works better as a Marine Corps symbol than the than the thing in a lot of see where you see they put the delta on top of the place of the eagle. That doesn't look, that doesn't look right to me. This I think fits better. So now we got that out of the way. Update time. Steph is going to be in the hospital for. They're they're a little more on the ball this time around. These guys, they're talking five days a week, therapy. It's like, for how many weeks? <laughs> so it's like, yeah, she's not going to make it to Kingsland. Okay, so the way it's looking right now is, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, play out the week here. I go straight to Kingsland because they're making sure that's going to happen. And we'll probably get Victor do a shout out too, and, and be Joan and feel the So I'll go up there, do my business. And then come back down here, probably do a Motel 6. So, cause we don't know what the rates are at this joint. As nice as it is, and as, as many reviews I keep seeing as how cheap it is, I doubt it's Motel 6 cheap. So we're, unfortunately, you know, probably have to go, you know, to that route. But yeah, we got all the stuff down here. Capone's is just up the road. It's, uh, Capone's is like, uh, it's a theme type thing. It's like Medieval Times, except with uh, a kind of cartoony Chicago gangland setting. Where you, you go in and you're dressed up like gangsters and they do a floor show and you eat Italian food and, you know, the whole thing. Slightly cheaper than Medieval Times. <laughs> so it depends how it works out. Eventually you might do both. But, uh, I think a lot of this is the universe telling us, slow the hell down. Let things work out, okay? <laughs> Because we're you know, getting some push. Another thing to just, you know, get the money, get the hell out of town. Well, it's not going to be that simple anyway, okay? Because one of the boys just get a U-Haul, load up the trailer, and then go to Kingsland and then keep on going. That means the trailer's sitting there for three days. So, no, I'm not going to do that. Okay, so <laughs> come back, load the trailer, and then get out. If nothing has materialized in the meantime. You got dinner in front of me here. So. Yeah, so you know, a lot of it's just going to be playing it out here. Now... Something a bit more topical to deal with. Uh, Ketwalski. Yes, things have been a little strained between our camp on this side of the, of the fandom menace and him. But uh, an example of why I still occasionally look in on his stuff, he came up with something regarding Anas Abdin and the lawsuit that is probably worth a look. Okay. Uh not going to go with what I was going, because I dug a little deeper myself, which I should start doing normally anyway. Uh, the main thing that kind of disturbed me in Ketwalski's video was a little bit where apparently he re you know, kind of rips off, allegedly, the opening scene from Dune, the opening narration bit where Virginia Madsen kind of comes into Princess Erlon and there's a, you know, the, it is a delicate time, you know. And a beginning is a very delicate time. Know then that it is the year 10,191. So, I want to do my own little side-by-side -side on this. Well, found the opening scene, and then found the uh, scene from uh, uh, Anas. Uh, it's an animation test. beginning is a very delicate time. Know then that it is the year 10,191. It says on the op very opening bit. In fact, I'll play a little bit. You know, I'll run the thing. But you know, it's the exact same audio. Of course it's going to sound the same. But it's just a lip sync test. It's not part of the game. So that was a big nothing. That's a big, it, it, it was a red herring. So, get Walski, you want to want to watch yourself, okay? You get, don't get a little carried away there. There are a few instances where maybe the record has been gilded a bit. Like, uh, 
the homosexual couple in the in the uh, game is not the homosexual couple that they said it was in the case. You know, the big bu- the big blonde guy it was not the partner of the of the uh, swarthy other guy. It was something else who look, looks still nothing like him, like Samus. And Yolanda probably owes more to Lieutenant Uhura than to Michael Burnham. Now, putting that aside, yeah, there are little bits like some guy gets on a transporter pad and yells "Energize" before going on. So yeah, you know, there's a little Star Trek stuff going the other way. But I think the the case still largely has a thing of like the fact that they settled on a space traveling tardigrade that can zip around anywhere in the universe instantaneously. You know, travel without moving. Like they said in the you know Dune thing. If it was anything else but a big blue tardigrade, CBS could probably claim something. You know, that no, it, it's happened. Because you know, the thing about scenes affair, no, that is not scenes affair. That is not a common thing in sci-fi. Certainly not tardigrades traveling every, anywhere. And be able, you know, it they're pretty unique circumstances. You can cite them individually, really. Like you can cite Dune for the infinite probability drive. No tardigrades involved. You got the spacing guild in uh, in Dune. Well, yeah, the yeah, the infant probably drive Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You got the the spacing guild in Dune. Those are mutated humans from taking spice for too long. And then you got the tardigrades in the game there. And they they drag up other instances where people have based a character on a tardigrade. They don't do what these tardigrades do. That what this guy what this one does. So. I think Anastel has a case here. If you get a judge, it's not going to just going to buy CBS. And, oh, this happens all the time. Bull. Show me another case where you have a big blue tardigrade that travels through space and time instantaneously. Then you'll have something. However, I think you know because the other part, the the, the rest of the thing is a little, is a little you know iffy though, where the character can be you know, It's like yeah, it's not you know that, that's not hang your hat on that too much. Okay. I think let's just focus on the tardigrade aspect because they did back off of that, and I, th- you know, and I would focus on CBS's conduct, where they came back and said, you know, you just take this, and we won't sue you for plagiarism. Like, Excuse me, that was just ballsy as the whole, you know, that was just galling the way they did that. I'm going to focus on that aspect right there, just their bad behavior. But yeah, uh, now I don't know if they were aware of the Dexter game. I'm sure they would have brought it up if they ha- if they were. So, and I guess now that it's out there, they might. <laughs> if, you know, this goes back before, before judge. They might. Well, this guy's stolen from us before, so you know we're being nice. You know. I think maybe you know it's like instead of you know let's not be so full throated. It's like let's. Let's be a little a little careful here, okay? I think he's still I think he's still got ripped off. It's a matter again. It's a matter of not what you know, it's what you can prove. So, if another judge sees it differently, you know, hooray right for us. If not, I'm not sure how much further they can really go. So, with that said, PayPal, Patreon down below. Uh, you know, mail stuff. The address is still for the time being. Captain Robert April, 4046 North Goldenrod Road, number 115, Winter Park, Florida, 32792. And a few more dates before I do a little car video of my own all the way to, on the way to uh, Georgia and, uh, and the Fan Appreciation Weekend, where we shall have all kinds of fun and games. I'll finally get to meet Bejo face-to-face and have her, you know, have her sign my, you know, the concordance I got here and then we'll figure out what to do with it. And maybe, you know, hopefully corner Vic and get him to do a shout-out for uh, Steph and everyone else. And we will get back to you later. <laughs>